Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being the show where I talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Inhumans. Another great episode where we have a lot of development all across the board in many different avenues. And it's, this seems like a very big episode that's kind of like the catalyst of like big change for our main protagonist. From different points of views, like you have Gorgon and Kornok. I feel like are kind of like changing the most because Karnak has always been like, well, for one, kind of going all badass, like showing off his skills, seeing a little bit more of display of his powers. Cause we haven't really like prior to like the premiere, we haven't really seen, I mean, obviously his powers been alone on Fritz, but this time he kicked in an overdrive, like the, um, uh, Reno shoots at him. He cuts the bullet in half of his hand. Um, which is kind of interesting. Uh, just because I, I, I wasn't, I was like, okay, I was like, no, that's him planning it out. And he tries to do it and get shot. It's like, no, he successfully did it. Sally Jin caught half of the, like, you know, the bullet went to, and hit Jin's, um, sad, sadly, that didn't 100% work out, but, I mean, it showed the fact that, it shows the fact that matter is his powers are slowly, but surely coming back, it's just not, maybe not at the full strength that they were, but, spending time with Jin, like, obviously, I kind of brought it up before, it seemed like Jin was going to make him relax a little bit, not be too in his own head, and it seems like that continues, because it's like, she teaches Karnak to not like, because Karnak before was always no, no doubt, no doubt whatsoever. Always pl- he always stayed inside of his head. He always planned everything out. Which is like, it's not good to be like that. You need to have a little doubt because you, you know, because doubt allows you new opportunities. Because if you're so set in your ways, you won't be able to do anything. That kind of plays into something into the past, um, something that happened in the past that Gorgon ended up taking the American flag from the moon. He's like, I'm gonna look at this. It's awesome, right? I'm gonna put it up in my room. He's like, you idiot. The satellite's gonna circle back around. The like 20 some minutes they're going to realize it's going to see your hoof prints and you're going to basically be the doom of the city it's like if it wasn't you would literally be the destruction of the city if you didn't have me but that whole situation gorgon brought it out it's like i'm having fun with you you haven't you can't even make a move like he's there still playing chess but he's yet to make the first move because he's always thinking about oh this this this, this all the different possibilities which is great it works in his advantage it's what his power is meant to do but the fact that matters is there's, there's points where you have to just take a step back and go, okay, like, I don't have, you know, almost like not giving 100% to his ability, relying a little bit on his heart, you know, not just his powers, essentially, think beyond just your powers and your abilities, you know, so, and like I said, that was kind of, it showed growth um, in him, in that regard, but like also talking about the fact that matter is him getting all badass when he had that wooden stick, and he's like, and Jin's like, okay, you, you've got reach now, and it's like you're it almost he didn't he was just testing it out, but it's like you look like you're just showing off, and then it got broken in half, and he still kicked all those other um, dudes' asses, which is kind of sad. Like ultimately, we found out like what well, Reno all this was about. Reno wanted a bigger cut. He ended up killing Ted just because like oh less people to worry about. I thought he was last episode. I was like, is he getting jealous of like Jen and Karnak being together? It's like no, it just Karnak and her being close means like well that's just one more person that he has to kill. That's why he was super okay with killing Karnak from the beginning because he had he already planned to kill Ted and Jen from the beginning too. Uh, ultimately, Karma came back and bit him in the ass because the guys uh, he's working with killed him because it's like yeah we don't deal with people who kill their partners it's like eh, you're, you're a douchebag you go out like a douchebag but uh as i was bringing as i used the example of karnak but it also meant like gorgon uh started thinking a little differently too he's like okay what would karnak do because like karnak has all the answers and now it's just like he's like okay being a little more i guess strategic in what he does instead of just kind of charging forward it kind of seems like that's just his way of handling things um I was actually kind of scared because I was so I was like, oh man, something's gonna happen. Jin's gonna die or something, isn't she? But I was like, no, surprisingly, she didn't. Uh, she walked away from this semi okay. Uh, I also appreciate the whole aspect of what Karnak did, like using one finger like from her back and ended up shooting a bullet for it so he could just pull it out. I was like, that's pretty impressive. Even she was kind of, and he even pinched like the nerves to make it so that she wouldn't feel any pain. It was like, like I said, tr- slowly but surely you can see more of his body. It's kind of interesting too because when he was bound. Um, and I guess it comes down to why, like, when he hit the bullet, kind of shows you, like, I guess, like, he can charge, like, the calculate, like, I don't know, because, like, Gorgon's like, can't you just get yourself out of those binds, but he's like, I can't, you know, can't, doesn't have full control of his powers, so even now, I feel like we still haven't even seen 100% of what Karnak is capable of, but I'm guessing, like, maybe he could charge up energy in his hands, kind of almost like some, well, I can say it because, you know, Marvel has, has right to it and everything, like, almost some Iron Fist level stuff, I wonder, is, like, what that supposed to be, but, I mean, maybe not. 
Nevertheless, um, sadly, Jin left because it's like, well, the fact of the matter is she's going to call the police and everything, and her and Karnak kind of had to go their separate ways. I was like hoping she'd kind of stick around like Louisa, like, oh, be a partner. Oh, you have to leave. And it's like, you know, because you could definitely tell Karnak was falling for her heart because he was like, yeah, the fact of the matter is I just want to spend time with you. And he, he, he throws out a number like one day, so on and so on and forth. It's like, it must have been like how long he spent time with her. And even Gorgon was like, yo, look at you. And you even have like Medusa and um, Black Bolt looking like, oh, wow. Because they've never seen Karnak like that. Because we got a taste of what he was like when it came to the ladies. Uh, like he was so caught up in everything, he couldn't see past her flaws. He even noticed like some of Jen's flaws. Like one of her toes was a little messed up. And the fact it didn't matter, she snored in her sleep. And she's like, yeah, you, you should have just stopped with the fact that you like spending time with me. Um... Obviously, this whole situation, it, it, it turns into an interesting development. I mean, because obviously we see the moment between Black Bull and Medusa, and he's asking her about her whole hair situation. She, he, she, he even said, did it, and she's like, yeah, it hurt, which is like, of course it would. Because once again, like, she never talks about it, like, you know, because I told, like, the fact that she cried about it, because that hair is like an extension of her. It's like a part of her. Like, not just, her hair isn't just a thing. It's a part of her. And even she admitted it hurt because her hair was alive and everything, and part of her inhuman ability and everything. So I think, in a way, I think her hair is almost like an entity on its own. But nevertheless, Black Bolt was just kind of upset hearing everything that happened and every, you know. Which Medusa's like, I'm okay, just focus on getting our family back, because that's all we need to focus on. But um, they used the um, Inhuman they brought along with them last episode to kind of track down Karna. And it turns into the whole conversation of like, oh, the fact of the matter is the way you rule things, the reason why things ended the way they are they are right now is because the way you rule things, bringing up the... And you even have Luis kind of commenting like, oh yeah, did you always treat your people like this? It's like, well, to be fair, this is a circumstance of they came to kill you, but it's, it's a situation of like... The people have kind of long wanted a change, but the fact of the matter is Black Bolt wanted things to stay the same. And even Medusa later on is like, yes, is our society flawed? Yes, it's not perfect. But the fact of the matter is all we've ever done is try to aim for the best of inhumanity. Because even Luis pointed out when the uh, lady pointed out like, yeah, you actually married the guy who, the, the, you married the son of the people that killed your parents. And even Luis is like, wait, what? Even you got it. She's like, even you got to admit that's a little... Crazy, because for her, she's like, people don't see the black bolt that she knows, and eventually they'll see the man that she knows that she loves. And because that's something, too, like, even with their circumstances, you can tell, like, legitimately she loves black bolt, and he loves her, too. It's not like a, it was a forced marriage. It's like they came together because of what happened to them. He lost his parents, and she lost hers, and they they found each other through that loneliness, you know? And came out stronger from it. So it's just one of those situations where it's like, in retrospect, it's like I brought it up before too. It's like you can understand where Maximus is coming from. He wants a change that's an equal opportunity for everyone, and that kind of plays a big part in this episode too. Because it's like Maximus, are you doing everything because it's the right thing to do, or are you doing this for selfish reasons? He's like, do you really think I'd want to turn against my family, ordering Oron to kill my family? It's like I think you do. Like you did it without batting an eye. You were just like, yep, kill my family. You lie to Crystal and like, oh, you no, I'm not going to like, you know, kill them when in actuality you are already like by that point, you'd already got Oran set up to do it. So it's like he plays innocent like he was and he even yelling out to his father's statue like if I had never become a human, even if I had some ability, none of this would have happened. I would have been king and I wouldn't have my destroyed family right now. Everything would be different. You know, it's like it's all you know what that tells me. It's all about you, 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 you. It's what it's, don't try to pretend like this is some grand cause like, oh, you're fighting for the, the small people. They're just a platform for you to use and manipulate people, because even a guy that's part of the genetic council is kind of like, yeah. I don't agree with the way you're going about things, Maximus. The effect of the matter is because there's a lot of people that are, you know, questioning that. Are you doing this for them or are you doing this for yourself? Because let's not forget what he's ultimately trying to do, too. It's like, because even Oran's like, why don't we kill Black Bolt? It's like, no, I need Black Bolt alive. I need you to keep Declan alive, too, because it's important. It's like, oh, you haven't let it slip that, like, oh, yeah, ultimately, your little revolution and everything you're doing, like, for the sake of your people, is for you to ultimately get power, that you're trying to correct the mistake that made you human so that you can get some grand power. It's like... You're not letting that detail slip out, are you, Maximus? But once again, to me, that's what makes a good villain in a sense of, like, the fact of the matter is they justify what they do. They're not just crazy. They legitimately think they're doing the right thing. And once again, I can understand where he's coming from. This caste system thing is not something I would personally believe in. And I, I can understand where a lot of people are like, oh, why do my abilities dictate what position I have in society? It's like, like the inhuman that's with them in this episode, that's with Black Bolt and Medusa, it's like, 
oh, she wanted to be a healer, but now she's meant to be it. Like kind of, she helps locate things, but it's like what you do helps society, but it's like, yes, it's not what you want it. And it's just like, in her mind, it's like my powers are going, could be used, you know, I could be a better use, you know? So like the whole caste system, yes, everyone has its issues with it, but it's just like, and it almost seems like something Medusa is kind of getting at. The fact of the matter is that, you know, what kind like all that Black Bolt does for the people and they don't even realize all the, the tranquility and peace that he's brought to them. But this whole situation, it does seem like it is tailored to create a situation where Black Bolt does have to question the way they've handled things. Because he's only continuing a system that's already existed for a long time. It's not like Black Bolt built this. It's like Adeline had already been like this for it's probably most likely centuries. So it's like you can't really blame him for it. Like he just continued it. But, you know, sadly, when the human that was with him died, like she was saying, like, you know, hey, be the king that we deserve, you know? And I think it's going to ultimately, like I said, I brought it up before. Like it seems like everyone's experience here on Earth is going to change them. And like it's Karnak and Gorgon, Karnak, it teaches him to not, he's been taught not to be so in his head. Gorgon is taught to kind of be a little more resourceful and the very least think before he leaves you know and crystal yeah you know her bonding with daniel it seems like it's more of like a don't get so caught up in everything to kind of like you know it's almost kind of like a, almost a go with the flow vibe it's kind of very similar to karnak in the sense of like she's always lived inside the, the palace she doesn't really have much new friends just because medusa is very overprotective and just it's like there, those responsibilities you don't have to let essentially it almost seems like don't let your responsibilities dictate who you are you are more than just the princess you are crystal you're a person like obviously I, I, that, that could 100 percent just be me reading too deeply into it but still i also kind of shoved it in um daniel's ex's Face. What was what is her name? Abby? Uh, the fact of the matter is, like, teleporting away with Lockjaw. Part of me was thinking, like, oh, Lockjaw's power isn't going to work just to kind of spite Crystal. It's like, oh, no, it actually worked. And she's like, what the? Uh, which, interestingly enough, uh, I caught a glimpse of preview of next uh, week's episode. And it seems like either next week's episode or an episode's coming up. But it seems like that's going to turn into something going forward. I don't know whether it's out of a jealousy thing. You know, the whole Daniel and her, like, recently broke up. Everything. Like, you know just trying to treat Crystal as a sideshow attraction or whatever. Like I said, it just it was just something interesting I saw kind of pop up from that situation. I'd love to kind of see uh, more about it going forward. But um, you have Oron. We kind of got a glimpse of like even more so of like what her healing ability is capable of because she was able to like slide her hand over her body and heal. It wasn't just like a wound. It's like the damage her body has sustained. Um... She healed it all. Uh, it sadly ended up killing Declan's assistant. Um, she did let it slip because Maximus was like, don't let Declan know about our connection. She's like, King Maximus. And it's like, whoa. And then you have that look on Declan's face. Now I think he's starting to slowly piece everything together. Like what this is about. It's like the Maximus I know it's a king of these people who are from a different way. So it's one of the same once again. So still curious about how he set this all up he must have been working on this for a very very long time this coup of his to have the connections he did to have those people go after triton to have those declan on reserve like you know but it, it does seem that mortis does have uh mortis and oran have black bolt's buddy because it's like oh he's your friend so that you can basically use him as bait to draw black bolt in but black bolt's back together with his entire family they're reunited uh, obviously happy to see each other which does kind of beg the question, what, like, you know, since I was talking about Declan, where will he fall in all this? Because it does seem like he is doing this out of scientific entry, but it also seems like he coincides with a lot of Maximus' ideas. It seems like he kind of does it on the more positive side of things, like, oh, we can take what makes Inhumans special and maybe we can use it to help people. I don't know if he's trying to necessarily, like, weaponize it and make other Inhumans. I mean, Maximus could possibly do that to kind of raise an army of his own people. Uh, people, I mean, because he's the only one that's ever really been challenged by the whole ter Terra Genesis situation. So it seems like he more so he's only concerned about himself in the grand scheme of things. So it's not he's not care doesn't care about what this could what's inside a black bolt, what Declan could do with it for the benefit of people. He doesn't care. Like I said, like Declan doesn't seem like he's just some mad scientist. It does seem like he does care on some level about the benefits of all of this. So he might him and Luis might act as kind of a stepping stone between the Inhumans on of Adeline. And the humans of 
you know, the humans of Earth and everything, and as well as the inhumans on Earth, too. So, I mean, I'm curious to find out, like, how this will all play out. Like I said, like, it seems like everything is slowly changing because everything they've experienced, I think it's slowly changing everyone's perspective. Because it's something that Crystal had brought up to Daniel. It's like, the fact of the matter is she sees the human race as a different way, because especially spending time with Daniel, because it's like, they've always thought of the human race as, like, a very destructive, like, race because the fact of the matter is constantly in wars just destruction and it's like now she sees that there's a lot more beauty to this world and maybe that will kind of open new doors like i said between the inhumans on the like everyone on earth from inhumans to humans to the inhumans that exist on the moon so and basically black black bolt has basically declared it like hey uh Medusa's like, yeah, and Black Bolt says he can't wait to meet up with you again. This time you had like a family talk, and Maximus is like, I'm ready for the family reunion. Now, what you're hoping, most likely hoping for, is that you can get your powers back. You can get powers before then so that you stand a chance against him. We also found out that there are people, even people amongst Adeline who don't agree with the way Maximus is running things, calling him a false king and everything. Just because for them, it's like, you know, like I said, there's whispers of whether or not Maximus really cares about the people or not. Don't get me wrong, there are people who follow him because they're like, oh, he understands us, he's trying to do the right thing by us and everything, which, the road to hell is paid for good intentions, that, you know, that age-old thing. So, it does beg the question of, like, once again, is he really doing this with the best of intention. I mean, all the inhumans that he's sending to go try and take on Black Bolt and the royal family, it's like, you're... People don't realize that they're being used as pawns, because even him, even he himself says, like, the fact of the matter is freedom... Like, people think, like, freedom's just gonna come to them for free. It's like, no. They want freedom, they're gonna have to, like, tr they have to work for it, essentially. So, if they want freedom, they're just gonna have to prove their resolve and fight for it. So, that's why some people enlisted willingly with the whole list of Inhumans he could send down there to take on a royal family. Others are just kinda like, I don't know about this, so... And also the whole him, like, be telling the uh, genetic council, they're like, oh yeah, you know, can you stop this whole my king thing? You're my, you're, you know, we're friends. And then he says, like, Maximus, and he's like, you know what? I prefer when you call me your lord, like, my lord. Even has uh, Oron, like I said, like, she doesn't 100% agree with everything that Maximus is saying about keeping Black Bolt alive. Because he's a... Um, liability essentially he could be more trouble if left unchecked especially considering what he can do but to be fair black bolt doesn't want to use his ability if he really wanted to he could and just i mean it did seem like he might have used it against maximus in like the premiere but whether he would have went through with it or not we'll just have to wait and see on that um when they finally confront each other again and see what happens then like I said, overall, a great episode. Like I said, it's just a lot of setup for what I think we're going to get a lot of heavy payoff in the next coming episodes because it's like the family's finally reunited. Like I said, everyone's kind of changing and learning a little bit more. And so I'm very interested to see what uh, the next episodes have in store for us. This was episode five, if memory serves correctly. So, well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, definitely. And so we only have three episodes left this season. So I'm interested to see uh, what goes down in the next episode, but also what's going to go down... Uh, for the last little bit of the season. But really, that's all I want to talk about in this episode. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.